Get that box wrapped as fast as you can. Well, give me the key. I want to make sure that door is locked. How'd you like to wear that on into your watch chain? We be wearing around your neck if we don't get out of here before the squad makes another round. Birthday gift space. Whose birthday? Might have been his, but I never took the trouble of looking it up. All you have to do is read any history book that's been put out in the past ten years. You know how can't read, Stacy. Come on, get it up. You all know what you have to do. Well. You be sure that gets back to where it belongs. All right, move out. Marty, you be sure that casket's on the westbound stage of Corbin. You got eight hours to get there. <laughs> in eight hours, I'll get it there in a wheelbarrow. Now, you know where we're meeting. I'll see you there. Sign those invoices. All right, Pop. Hi, Phil. Well, say, haven't seen you for quite a spell, Davy. No. Pop won't let me make the run with him or leave while school's going on. Mm -hmm. It's summer vacation now. Summer vacation? Oh, now, in case you haven't looked at the calendar lately, it just happens to be September. Oh. Well, you, well, you see, Cal. Now where we live, it's real high in the air, right near the Continental Divide. Oh, I see what you mean. Sort of a difference in climate, huh? Yeah. And when the snow gets real deep, the ranch kids can't make it into school. So we go to school summers, and we take our summer vacation in the fall. Well, now that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. When you come to think of it, it does make sense. You uh, pretty smart in school, are you, Davy? Smartest in my grade. Can you say your letters? Oh, I've known them ever since I was a little kid. And your numbers, too? Well, everybody knows those. Supposing you say them for me. Sure. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Who's been teaching you how to count? I guess I better get going, Cal. I'll see you next trip. I asked you a question, son. Who's been teaching you how to count? Uh, Luke. About cars, it is. I guess I'm going to have to have a talk with Luke. Well, it's not his fault, Pop. It's mine. I asked him to teach me how to play seven up Pete. You aren't going to say anything to him, are you, Pop? Well, as long as you're going to take the blame for it. Well, thanks a lot, Pop. Well, now, uh, about this being the smartest student in your grade. Well, I am. I'm the smartest boy, anyway. How many boys in your grade, Davy? <laughs> Just me. I see. Well, you wouldn't want me to be a girl just to get good grades, would you? Son, I wouldn't want you to be anything on earth except just what you are. <laughs> now, you get on out there. Make sure that team's hitched properly. Get it. Yes, sir. Hey, what's in that canvas wrap crate I'm carrying? What's that look like to you, Sam? Well, from general appearances, I say it could be a coffin. Well, say now. You keep on like that, you'll be almost as bright as your kid. Thanks. It's all right. Who's it belong to? Don't ask me. I got as a transfer off the stage from Corbin. Freight's all paid. All I know outside of that is you're supposed to take it on west and somebody will meet you to claim it. Just thought I'd ask. Occupied or vacant? Well, I helped load it off the stage from Corbin. From the heft of it, I'd say it is occupied. Well, at least that's one customer who won't complain about the chuck holes in the road. See you later, Cal. <laughs> one customer won't be complaining about the chuck holes in the road. <laughs>
half hour more. Well, heads I walk, tails I sit. Stacy Gibbs, I declare you're an unlucky man. A big box for carrying? Just freight we have to deliver? I know somebody's dead in the coffin. Oh, if you knew, why'd you ask me? I was just wondering where he was going. Where do you think dead people go? Well, last time I went to Sunday school, Reverend Joker said that the good ones went to heaven and the bad ones went to hell. Well, you cut that out. I'm just saying what Reverend Joker said. All right. What do you think about it? Well, I was just thinking that no matter which one it is, going by stagecoach is sort of a slow way of getting there. I've been walking since sunup this morning. Climb inside. Well, I don't want to put any of your passengers out. We don't have any passengers, so help yourself. In that case, I'd be much obliged. If um, you don't mind, I'd like to ride up there with you, see a little more of the country. Well, I don't mind, but it'd be a little crowded. Oh, all right, inside, Clark. I've already seen the country. All right, Davy. Thanks, boy. I'm mighty grateful to you. Oh, that's all right. We make this run once or twice a week. Man gets kind of tired of it. Sure. I understand. Davy, put the check rein over the hames in that swing team. Yes, Bob. It's a real nice boy. I'd like to think so, considering he's the only one I own. My name's Kane, Simon Kane. Glad to know you. Glad to know you. Stacy Gibbs. Think you're not too well acquainted with this country. <laughs> That's a fact. The next time you start walking, remember it's a long ways from one stop to another. I'll try to keep that in mind. All ready, Pop. Inside. All I know is shipped from someplace east of here. A mighty lonesome country to be buried in. If you're six feet underground, I guess it's mighty lonesome no matter where you happen to be. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you had a point there, brother. You know that fork of the road about a quarter mile from here? Yeah. Thought you said you didn't know this country. Just enough to get where I'm going. Go south of that fork. Mister, I go straight through. I'll lay you long odds you go south. Any amount you want to bet. I won't take that bet. I wouldn't either if I happened to be sitting where you are. Do you mind telling me why? Oh, well, let's just say I got tired of walking and wanted a stagecoach. Or we might even say you happen to be carrying the remains of someone that's very precious to me. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
stuff's kind of cold. I'll get some wood. Two days already, Pop, and you haven't told me why. Because I don't know why. Well, you drove here, didn't you? Yeah, with a gun in my ribs. Do you think Stacy would have shot you if you hadn't done what he wanted? Quite sure of it. Boy, sometimes grown-ups don't make much sense to me. Sometimes they don't make much sense to me either. Sorry this happened, Davy. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry for, Pop. It's sort of like when we go hunting or fishing. This is a little different. You're scared they're gonna hurt me, aren't you? I didn't say that. You know, sometimes I'm a lot smarter than you think I am. I'm scared, too. Yeah, I'm double scared. I know they'd have to kill you first. You over there. Get back in a wiki up. You heard me. Get down and crawl back where you belong. There we are, Davy. I'll tell you just once more. Get down and crawl back where you belong. What's the matter? Can't you hear? My hearing happens to be excellent. I just don't make it a habit to listen to people like you. So don't give me orders, you two-bit loudmouth. <laughs> Uh, you never did have any backbone. It's too bad you couldn't have got shot in the war instead of a lot of good men I could name. You finished what you meant to tell him? Not completely. But I don't use that sort of language in front of my boy. Now crawl back in your hole. Or would you like to stand up to him without a gun? One thought I hold about Ohio. He's liable to play it big someday without any backing and somebody's apt to kill him. My apologies, Mr. Kane. If he gives you any more trouble, just yell. Marty and Clell don't like him any better than I do. We aim to make your stay here as pleasant as possible. How long a stay? Oh, I don't know. Three or four days, maybe. Then what happens? You shoot both of us? That might depend on you. Nobody likes to die. But after going through Manassas, Santitum, and a few other battles I could mention, I kind of figure I've outlived my time. My boy hasn't done anything to you. So, you used to be a soldier, huh? I was in uniform four years. Uh huh? What color? Happened to be blue. Not that it makes any difference now. As I recall, it made a lot of difference at the time. What part of the service were you in? Cavalry. Hmm. I like that. Officer or private? I was a captain when the war ended. Well, oh, I like that too. In fact, I like you, you and your boy. If you like us so much, why don't you let us go? I wish I could, but I can't. Yeah. Good night, Kane. You know something, Mr. Gibbs? I always thought I was the worst harmonica player in the world, but I'm not, you are. Davy. You told me I'd always tell the truth. So help me, that's the truth. Mind your manners. Yes, sir. <laughs> You don't have to reprimand him, Mr. Kane. It's probably the truth. Here. 
Why don't you play a tune for us? Go ahead if you want to. Say, that's a real beaut. It's a lot better than mine. I had to do pretty good on it. Come on over by the fire. Gentlemen, by act of Congress or otherwise. As an ex-sergeant, you'll show a little more respect to a superior officer. May I present Captain Simon Kane? Cavalry officer in the Union Army, not so recently retired. Evening, Captain. Evening, Captain. Good evening, gentlemen, and stand at ease. Neither one of you salute properly. You presuming to tell us how to soldier, Captain? I haven't rated that form of address since I was discharged from the service. And I wouldn't presume to try to tell you anything. You've been kind of high and mighty, ain't you, Captain? Thank you for your invitation, Mr. Gibbs. My son and I are leaving. Ah, you gotta forgive us, Captain. Nobody around this camp ever made a rank above sergeant. That's understandable. It's still no excuse for bad manners. Come along, baby. Here's your harmonica, Mr. Gibbs. Thanks. Mr. Kane? Mr. Gibbs, my son and I are well aware of the fact that we're your captives. And we're also well aware of the fact that you shoot us in the back when you consider it convenient. Until that time comes, we'll take no insult from you. Now leave us alone. You're sort of mad, aren't you, Pop? Yes, I'm sort of mad. I could tell, because you almost busted my hand. I'm sorry, Davy. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry for. I'm sort of mad myself. But your hands are bigger than mine. You're the one who brought him over, Stace. Introduced him as a captain. Yeah. What does he mean to you? He's just another officer. When he was captain, he had it real good. But we did all the fighting and we did all the work. Go on, go to bed, both of you. I said, get out of here. Sleep, Pop? Not yet. I can't sleep either. Do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? No, I don't mind. You never told me you were a captain in the Army. It didn't seem important. War is something I'd just as soon forget. You know something, Pop? No, what is it? The older I grow, the more things I learn about you that I didn't know before. Well, I had quite a few years head start on you, son. And you know something else? What's the something else? The more things I learn about you, the longer I live with you, the prouder I get. You know, I've got just one wish, Davy. I hope that you live long enough to know how proud I am of you. Kane? I thought I told you to leave us alone. I'd like to talk to you. I thought you had all your talking done. Now leave us alone. Look, I didn't call you captain this time. I'd like to apologize and try to explain something to you. I'll leave it up to you, Davy. Captain Keene will see you, Mr. Gibbs. Sergeant Gibbs expresses his appreciation. Would you join me in the talk, Captain? A very honest one? I'll be glad to. Frank? I can assure you it's not poisoned. Although a few minutes ago, I wish it had been. Well, I wasn't thinking of that exactly. 
Well, I'm old enough to know what a drink is, Pop. Go ahead, take one. I think you need it. I think you're right. Mr. <laughs> Kane, I'd like to tell you a story. I'll explain a lot of things. Particularly about that coffin and why you're here. I don't want to be personal, but doesn't your son ever go to sleep? I think he's grown up enough to listen to whatever you have to say. Well, it's not exactly what I have to say. It's just that I don't want to even repeat it. It's past your bedtime, baby. Can I stay if I give you my word? Uh, it isn't up to me. I'll take your word. Thanks, Mr. Gibbs. Have you ever heard of Major Lee Henry Carter? The most famous Indian fighter the West has ever known. The mere mention of his name inspired terror among the Cheyenne and the Sioux. He waged an unceasing battle against them to make the immigrant roads to the West safe for the settlers. He died as he lived, gallantly in battle. And his name has lived on to be a symbol of heroism in the West. His body still lies in state in Grassboro, Nebraska, in a tomb erected by the soldiers who fought for him and worshipped him. Tourists by the thousands come yearly to pay their homage to this man. Where'd you learn all that? In a history book. Well, I'm sure glad to know they teach you something else in school besides how to count with a deck of cards. Well, you should learn about him, Pop. I guess he did more for our country than George Washington. Mr. Kane, I don't have any kids. What do they need? Heroes or the truth? Well, I think they need both. Sometimes the two don't go together. Then I think I'd rather have them know the truth. Davy, where'd you say his body lies in state? In Grassboro, Nebraska. In a tomb erected by the soldiers who fought beside him and worshipped him. According to the books. Do you really want to know where his body lies in state? Where? Right over there. On top of that conquered coach you were in for Timberline two days ago. Oh, you're lying. Now, Davy, I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a liar. You don't know what you're talking about. That's Major Carter's body, all right. How can you be sure? Because I'm the one who figured out how to steal it. For what? For $20,000 and reasons of my own. Good night, Mr. King. Pony Express went out of business quite a while ago. But that horse looks like you thought the mail was late. <laughs> yeah. Take care of him for me, will you, Danny? Sure. And sell me up a fresh one, one that can cover lots of ground. All right. Cal, on the stove. Luke! You're sort of ahead of time, aren't you? According to schedule, you're not due here till just about sundown. According to schedule, Simon was doing outpost two days ago. What are all those cavalry troopers doing here in town? Mm -hmm. That's right, two days ago. Oh, that's a military escort. There was a closed carriage coming to town real late last night. Yeah, who's in it? Well, the story around town is that it's the widow of Major Lee Henry Carter. She come out here to dedicate a monument or something. Well, if she's looking for Lodge Pole Ridge where he's killed, she's missed it by 100 miles or so. She didn't want any publicity, so she took the long way around. That's how come the local papers didn't print it. You see, uh, Simon was doing outpost two days ago. When did you leave there? Last night. Wore out four horses getting here. Where's Simon staying? How would I know? He and the boy left here three days ago. Three days ago. Nobody's seen him since. He never made the first relay station. How sure he was here in town? It just don't seem to figure. Simon's not a drinking man and the boy with him? It figures, but it figures in a way I've been trying not to think about. How many passengers were on that stage? There wasn't any. You sure of that? All he was carrying was a coffin. I remember him saying he finally had a customer who wouldn't complain about the chuck holes in the road. <laughs> Yeah, 
I never heard of a corpse holding up anybody. I'll see you later, Cap. Hey, hold your horses, Luke. Up to now, I never thought about no corpse. Well, Cal, most people don't. Personally, I got other things on my mind. Uh, the trouble with you is you never read a New York paper. Now, what are you talking about? The corpse. God darn it, the corpse. Boy, you have really pulled your picket pen this time. I'm going to go get Doc Apperson. Maybe he can straighten you out. Here, here. Now, read that. Or maybe you never went that far in school. Now then, who do you figure ought to see Doc Apperson? This paper's dated three weeks ago. Where'd you get it? I got a sister in New York sends it out to me. Local papers print this? No. Luke, you don't really figure Siam robbed a grave. No, but I'll give you odds he's carrying the corpse. Major Carter's wife's here to pay the ransom. Well, I'll get the marshal. Uh-uh, you stay right here and button up that old lip and get rid of that paper. Otherwise, I'll make you eat it. carriage to the outskirts of town. You will not go beyond that point, nor will you allow anyone to go beyond that point until you receive further orders. Yes, sir. All right, mount up. I don't know where you're going, but I hope it's east, because there's no use trying to go west. What's wrong with going west? Ask the army. All I was told is the road is blocked by the cavalry patrol. Danny, I'll tell you, it's been four years of my boyhood learning to get by those federal patrols. Somerset's at the top of the gap. Marty and Cleller just outside campus lookouts. What do you want me to do? Start packing. We'll be leaving here in a couple of hours. You sound awful sure that money will be here by then. I am. What time do you figure we'll get it? What difference does that make? Well, I just thought I'd spell somebody on the road, give him a chance to get a hot meal and some rest. I'd rather have you close at hand, Ohio. You see, I don't trust you at a rifle range. Start packing. David? I suppose it's all right if I have some to eat. Or are we supposed to starve to death before you shoot us? <laughs> oh, I always heard a condemned man was entitled to a hearty meal. If you can stand Ohio's cooking, well, help yourself. Thanks. Your father hasn't eaten yet. Well, I guess older people don't get as hungry as us kids do. I guess you're right. I didn't mean that about being a kid. I know you're going to kill us, but I'm not afraid of you or anybody else. Bravo. David, tell your father I'd like him to join me in a cup of coffee. I don't think my pop would have coffee with a grave robber. Is that what you think I am? Well, aren't you? I suppose so. In a lot of ways, I guess I'm worse. You tell your father I'd appreciate it if he had a cup of coffee with me, though. Well, I'll ask him. Thank you, David. Are you sure you're not hungry, Pop? You can have this plate, and I'll go get another one. No, David. You go ahead and eat. Oh, I almost forgot. He wants to know if you'd have coffee with him. See, why not? Mm -hmm. 
It's nice of you to join me. I'm not being nice. I suppose you got something to talk about, and I could use a cup of hot coffee. Sit down, help yourself. I wanted to tell you we'll be leaving pretty soon. Both the living and the dead? That's right. Thanks for the information. I didn't quite finish what I had to say last night. I heard enough. Do people want heroes or do they want the truth? I think they want heroes. Matter of opinion. Well, Carter was no hero, Mr. Kane. He was a liar and a butcher and a glory hunter. Sounds like you know an awful lot about him. I ought to. I served under him for two years. So did Marty and Clell and the others. We were with him when he got to be a hero at the Lodge Pole Massacre. <laughs> the only reason we're still alive is we were in a guardhouse when the battle started. Your lucky day. I don't know. He killed 50 friends of mine making a reputation for himself. It's not too easy to live with. Bitterness never is. So your boy has a hero. Maybe that's what he needs. Maybe that's important to him. I've never seen anything about what you said in public print. No, and you never will. Carter's wife owned two newspapers. She spent all her life and most of her fortune making him a legend. I find that hard to believe. I don't blame you. There are only five men alive who know the true story. They're all right here. That's still a poor excuse for grave robbing. <laughs> you know, I like you, Kane. You come right out and say what's on your mind. Why shouldn't I? I know some men that were shot for it. I know a lot of people who are shot for lying. Kane, you can harness that team. We'll be leaving within the hour. We'll need that stagecoach to return the coffin. Talk, I, I suppose you're carrying a gun. There's one way to find out. No, I'm not that curious. Now move away from that horse. That's it. Now tell me what business you got on this road. Well, I know you won't believe me, mister, but I'm looking for a stagecoach and a couple of friends of mine. Well, suppose you quit looking as of now. You leave that horse right where he is and hightail it back into town. I'm awful tired. I reckon you need the horse more than I do. And the 
faintest idea. Some young fella said he was looking for a stagecoach. You stay here with the horses, son. What are you doing, one? What are you doing? Let him go. He'll tell you anything you want to know. All right, tell him. Well, I didn't do anything to him. I just took his horse and made him walk to town. Satisfied? I'm satisfied. All right, we might as well get this business over with. Here's the money, Clell. You take charge of it. Now, clear out the four of you. Ain't you going with us, Stace? No. I don't ever want to see any one of you again. What are you aiming to do, Stace? Turn us over to the law? Look, Ohio, you got your money and a chance to go. Now, take advantage of it while you still got your health. Go on, get out. I'll see you then. Until the law catches up with all of you. <laughs> Let's have a drink. Are you all right, Pat? Sure, I'm all right, son. Davy, see that horse over there? Why don't you tie him behind the stage? Go ahead, Davy. Do what he says. Yes, sir. To your health, Mr. Kane. And to yours. I know you don't mean it, Captain, but thanks for your courtesy. And now to the greatest hero of them all, Major Lee Henry Carter. Uh, toast like that, it'd spoil the taste of good whiskey. Here's $500, Mr. Kane. This will pay for your passengers' trip back east and pay for your time. You mean we can leave now? Both of us? Anytime you like. You never were in any real danger. Neither you or the boy. But I... Well, I couldn't let you know that. What about that coffin over there? Well, that's Major Carter's body, all right. Only it wasn't stolen. Mrs. Carter paid to have it taken. Doesn't seem to make much sense, does it? Not to me. <laughs> well, Mrs. Carter was the kind of a woman who wanted a man with no faults and above reproach. I can't blame her. She loved a man and endowed him with all the virtues she wanted him to have. He didn't have any of them. She knew it, but she couldn't recognize it. If you've ever loved someone very deeply, you can understand. I can understand. Pretty soon the legend grew dim. There were only five men left in the country who could destroy it. So they were paid to break into the tomb. Well, now it begins to make a little sense. Oh, wait till you see the papers. Makes good copy. And all the glory can be relived again. How do you know I'll keep your secret? Davy needs a hero, too. Even beyond you. 
You wouldn't take that away from him. Well, I suppose you're anxious to be on your way. What am I supposed to say when I get back to town? Anything you like. Bye, Stacy. Maybe we'll meet again. Bye, Mr. Kane. Say goodbye to Dave for me. And uh, give him this. He can get a lot more out of it than I can. I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah, I think I know what it is. I haven't been completely honest with you, but I see no harm in being honest now. My four distinguished companions uh, thought we blackmailed Mrs. Carter, and they were paid well for it. They think the law's after them, too, so we won't hear from them again. What about you? Well, I did what was asked of me. I hated Carter more than anything else in the world. But I loved his wife. She was my sister. So long, Kane. Robber, that is. Yeah, for a grave robber, real nice. I guess he's the one we have to thank for getting out of there alive. He's the one. Oh, I never want to go through that again. To be honest with you, Pop, I was scared. Well, as long as we're being honest with each other, I was scared myself. <laughs> I think this one's harmless. Uh, you like a ride, mister? The trouble you've put me to the last four days? You know I've ridden a thousand miles and walked another 200 just because I thought you needed help? Where have you been? You think you've had troubles. You should have been with us. Well, Davey boy, my old feet. I wish I had been. I see you found my horse. I had to put down a cash deposit for him. Well, it'll be a slight charge for towing services when we get back to town. I suppose I get to buy the drinks, too. That's right. Well, that'll be a pleasure. At least you'll have time to tell me what happened. Nothing to tell. We just took the wrong turn in the road. The wrong turn? Help! Yeah! Get out of here, Teddy! Hey! Oh. <laughs> around, he'll flush out Prano when he sees him. See you. Remember, he's no good to us dead. Unless we take him, amigo. He's no good to us alive. Well, 
to be, miss? Rye. Two fingers? Oh, that much would keep me awake. Better make it two of mine. <laughs> You're just uh, passing through? Leaving on the stage in the morning. Gent over there is pulling out in the morning, too. Uh, how much do I owe you? Oh, it's on the house. A gal like you is good for business. Thanks. Mine? It would be an honor, senorita. Pleasure indeed. Will you join me? I already have. Salute. Life, senorita, is full of disappointments. Already I was hoping we might have breakfast together. Maybe some other time. Don't run off on my account, honey. Just renewing an old acquaintance. There's one thing I gotta say for you. You sure know how to wear out a horse. But not how to hide a trail, huh? You're to be complimented. That's my business. You ready? Completely, senor. Under the table, there's a 44 pointed directly at your belt buckle. Remove your hand from the gun, por favor. If we should meet again, senorita, perhaps you would... Uh... If we meet again. Gracias, señorita. Adiós. Caballeros, continue as you were. and grow old is don't ask questions. for a man's back. Who's back? Huh? Oh, never mind. Come on, let's get the rest of the baggage loaded. <sighs> oh, God, that men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. You think that up all by yourself? <laughs> That's from Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. I'm merely trying to prove it. You're mistaken, sir. It's from Othello, soldier of Venice. My dear Major. Cassio's speech. Act 2, scene 3, line 291. Uh, I bow, sir, to your superior memory. Already it would seem the enemy has stolen away my mind. Would you care to make his acquaintance? That depends. Has he got a good name? My own private stock. Allow me. Aeneas Longbridge, doctor of distillations divine and creator of this rarest of vintages. Truly a nectar fit for the gods. He don't qualify, Longbridge. All my enemies are pedigreed. <laughs> Our pumpkin kind, sir, awaits without. The next stop, my clothes will turn to rags. Oh, Leslie, it's still not too late. Let's turn back. St. Clair never turns back, Lucinda. I don't like leaving Washington any more than you do, my dear, but those are my orders. We might learn to like the West, you know. It's dirty, and so are its crude and uncivilized people. Mr. Greeley can have it. Howdy, folks. I'm Luke Perry, your driver through to Outpost. Stage ready to go any time you are. Major St. Clair, Mr. Perry. 
Uh, my wife? Pleasure to have you, ma'am. <clears throat> Mr. Perry, I hope it's a smooth road to outpost. Glassware. We're ready to leave, miss. No, miss. No, missus. Just Sadie. Sadie Wren's the name. Mr. Perry, are you a gambling man? Well, to tell you the truth, ma'am, uh, money never really meant that much to me. Now, that's a bet out of one. How's that? That you had good sense to go with that face. But it doesn't solve my problem. Got a coin? I believe in getting expert guidance in all important decisions. If the eagle comes up, I hang my hat in Timberline. The face, I see what's on the other side of the mountain. I kind of lost interest in this town anyway. Thanks! You're not going to bring that dog aboard this coach. Well, I'm certainly not going to let him walk. Driver, I demand that you forbid that woman to bring that dog in here. Well, ma'am, I... If you don't like dogs, maybe you're the one that ought to walk. I'd be glad to take care of him, miss. Up on top. Oh, you don't have to worry. I know quite a bit about dogs. You see, I, I used to have one myself. What happened to him? Well, he ran away. I didn't think dogs ever ran away from little boys. My, my pop says he did, but I think he's dead. Pop and Luke just don't want to tell me because they know how I'd feel. I see. But I'll take real good care of him. You can trust me. All right, I trust you. What else can I do with a face like that? Here. Oh, thanks. that question for a long time, Davy. No two men are the same either. Well, men couldn't be as different as those two ladies. How's that? Well, that major's lady. You know, she never smiled once the whole time we were at the station. She doesn't talk much either. And she hasn't got hardly any paint on her face. Another one has? Well, it's not just that. But that other one laughs a lot. Nothing seems to bother her. Does that make her better? Well, I think she feels better. Davy, you're a natural-born politician. What's that? A man who can answer questions without losing votes. Senor, but who wants to die? What's the trouble, Perry? No trouble, Major. If your driver does as he's told. Who are you and what do you want? Manolo Marcel Lalanda. I don't have time to tell you what I want. What I need, amigo, is a horse. You will step down, Major, all of you. Leslie. I must ask you to hurry, please. Uh, 
Uh, allow me, Cleopatra. My deepest apologies, senoritas. I'm glad those men didn't. Gracias, senorita, so am I. You will come down now, both of you. You heard the man, Davy boy. That looks like a bad wound to me. Merely an inconvenience, senor. You will unharness the lead horse, release the others. You'd leave us out here on foot? That is exactly what I must do. With regret. You'll learn what regret is. When I reach the authorities, sir. Hold it, Major. I'll handle this. You know he's right. You won't get five miles, even with a horse. The horse pronto. You better let me have that gun. Stay where you are. Gun. In my country, senor, a man never loses stature if if he surrenders to to a beautiful woman. Your business. Why, he's fainted. That wound will be the least of his problems from now on. Well, I'll say one thing for him. The man's got style. Who is he? I've only known him since last night in the saloon. He didn't tell me his name. Give me a hand. Open the door, Davy. You're not going to take him with us. I protest, Perry. Plainly, this man is a criminal. Look, Major, this isn't the army, and I've got a schedule to meet. We'll turn him over to the law and let them take it from there. Don't worry, folks. He's my prisoner, remember? <laughs> Your employers will hear about this. They figure to. Why didn't you use this? Well, Davy Boy, when a man's holding a gun on me, I make it a rule to do what he says. Most of the time. Shoulder. That guy can sure cover ground. The stage can't be more than an hour away. I can just smell the man. We well, can take him any time now that he's out in the open away from the law. Now that stage stops overnight up ahead. There's bound to be other people on it. Since when do you let anybody come between you and 50,000 pesos? <laughs> on Hattlebird, but we might need that firewood sometime for next week. Down Texas, when you hire a man to tend stock, he tends stock. I never claimed to be no Paul Bunyan. Thank you. 
A little late for him. Maybe he stopped to get some firewood. There's passengers on that stage, Hattlebird. Don't you ever claim to be a Bo Brummel, neither. Like you, dearie? Folks, step down and stretch your... Uh, stretch yourselves. Coffee's been boiling since sunup, and the beef's burned just about eaten black. And here were forests, ancient as the hills, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. I trust your accommodations are better than your service, sir. Hmm. How's Lolanda? Oh, he's still out, and he's lost a lot of blood. Otherwise... Davy, looks like Hattlebird needs some help with those horses. Oh, sure, Luke. Can I take your dog with me? Oh, you go right ahead. Thanks. We'll need some hot water. Hot water. Who's that? Never mind, just help me get him inside. I don't agree with you. We certainly have more than one friend in Washington who's in a position to see that your orders are changed. The army is not controlled by friendship. There it is. Mm, not bad for a mule skiller. I admit that our introduction to the frontier hasn't been exactly reassuring, but once I reach my command, I promise you things will be done my way. We all owe God one life. If we pay him today, we are quit for tomorrow. And how is the patient, Mr. Longridge? Still in debt to his maker, sir. Thanks to Mr. Perry. Your health. I think I used a little too much juniper in that. Still. 30 30? They're mostly permanent. Outside of holding up stages, you must live right. I'll fetch the bags. Heat some more water first, Zeke. Yes, Doctor. How's he doing? Fine now. Don't look so concerned. I might get the impression that if he tried to hold up a stage again, you'd help him. You just did. Boy, that weren't nothing. Why, the time was when I could out mean or out bite any rattlesnake in Texas. I swear you think with that cannon. Don't you want to take him? Not that way. Shooting means graves, and graves mean the law. And the law means adios 50,000 pesos. Now, that bounty is ours, only if we get back to Durango with one live Lalonde. Cover the station. Don't shoot unless I tell you. Put that rifle in the boot and keep it there. I'll do the talking and the shooting. finished yet? Yep. Dug that lead out like he was mining gold. Hey, who is he? Some Mexican fella. He said his name was Lalanda. Myself, I'd have left the slug in the man and the man on the road. Why? Oh, you wouldn't understand, boy. You see, Davy, Hattlebird got himself shot up by the Mexicans at San Jacinto. Why, to hear his side of the story... <laughs> Miller. All them two need is the fur and the white stripes. I better get these horses in the barn. Good idea. Nice day. Has been. Spare a little water? It's free. Thanks, friend. Keep that coyote out of the way, Chico. He might get stepped on. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. 
You the driver? He's inside. Mind getting him? Yep. I'm busy. Davey, go face Luke. Uh, I never would have thought it possible. No, what? You're going to hurt him more with that bandage than you do with the knife. Let me do it. You sure you know how? Bullets, ballads, and booze. That's the story of my life. There's two men outside. They want to talk to you. You better stay here with Sadie. Hey, Longbridge, you know how to handle one of these things? I know which end to point. When Casey comes around and wants to travel, he can't. Thy word is my command. You the fellow they call Luke? That's right. My name is Brandy. Joe Brandy. Howdy. I'm what you might call um, a troubleshooter for the Mexican government. Ain't you a bit north for Mexico trouble? Not when the trouble can ride, friend. You picked up a gent named Lalanda a while ago. I've been commissioned to take him back to Durango. Now, I've come a long way, and I don't intend to go back without him. You make it sound like a threat. Why should I threaten you? I'm just a man with a job to do. You mind let me see that commission? It's in Durango. Well, I'm sure you can understand my position. I can't very well turn this fellow Lalanda over to a man with no credentials. He'll have to go back to outpost with me. You take your problem up with the law there. Perry, some people got to do everything the hard way. I want Lalanda now. Just let them hands hang free, boys. If you still think you got a case, take it to outpost. Right now, you own private property. Hosanna, catch me! Now, tell Pappy to drop that deadly weapon. He might hurt himself. Pappy! You better do what the man says, Adelbert. In here. Pappy. Oh, Pappy! All right. You got four rifles out here, I got ten inside. You start shooting, so will they. Perry, you got me all wrong. I don't want to shoot anybody. I just want Lalanda, nothing else. Now, why should you stick your neck out for some man who means nothing to you? Burn the house down. Honey, you sure do get around. Friends of yours, Mr. Perry? Sweetheart, we try to be friendly with everyone. Get back inside, Sadie. You too, Davy. Come on, Davy. What's going on out here? Hey. Look at him. When we deliver Lalanda, you can buy a dozen uniforms prettier than that. Ten rifles, you said, huh? Zeke, why don't you serve up that dinner? Come on, Heidelberg. The answer's still the same, Brandy. You start something now and you'll have the whole territory on your back in a day's time. Now, I'm a reasonable man, Perry, but if anything does start here, remember, you started. Now, you got till first light to see it my way. If I don't get the lander by then, I'm going to have to turn those Apaches loose. This is all about. 
They want Lalanda. Claim they've been commissioned by the Juarez government to bring him back to Mexico. Bounty hunters, sure as sunshine. Mr. Perry, what has this to do with us? Well, ma'am, they've got some Apaches out there. We've got until dawn to give up Lalanda or... Or what? Or they'll start shooting. Them buzzers ain't taking no for an answer. What are you going to do? I'm not sure till he comes to and we can talk to him. Well, I am sure. Having been a fervent coward since birth, I see no point in breaking a lifetime habit for him. You seem to be collecting these. Longbridge, don't be a fool. They said nobody leaves. They have no interest in me, Mr. Perry. Adieu, fair people. Hey, the horses are in the barn if you get that fur. Thank you. Let him go, Luke. It's his fool, Nick. All right, cover. Don't... <clears throat> don't shoot! Uh-uh. My turn. Don't shoot! Get the door! Major, don't stand there! Use your gun! Fastest man I ever saw. No. They got the idea. Let them think about it for a while. You all right? Mr. Perry, I decided I'd like to stay after all. Leslie, are you all right? Why, yes, dear. Yes, I'm fine. Mr. Perry, we have two alternatives. Make a run for it or attack. That stage outside is as good as a fort on wheels. Attack what? They're dug in out there, Major. We couldn't get past the corral. He's right, Major. Even if we got to the stage, they'd shoot the horses down as we were leaving the yard. Then what do you plan to do? For now? Stay put. Apaches are stubborn about a fight, Luke. Especially when they're setting high on the hog. Brandy won't shoot any of us unless he's forced to. So let's not worry about that advantage until he calls for a showdown. Meanwhile, we'll eat. Might as well make ourselves comfortable while we can. Longbridge, could you use a drink? That might be getting cold. Thank you, Davy. Say, aren't you getting sleepy? Not with all this going on. Are you? No. I never could sleep when it was so quiet. Horizontal. Down the seat and down there like a pigeon. Like a pigeon on a rail. If we drink coffee long enough, he can fly away again. He's not going anywhere except back to Durango with us. If he's around when you're ready to leave, you saw what's over there. We could take them all easy. The Apaches are beginning to wonder. What holds you back? They are? Tell me, Nacho, are you beginning to wonder? No, Brandy, no, nothing like that. I was... <laughs> Now, compadre, who's in charge of this expedition, huh? You, Brandy, you. I wish you got a great sense of humor, Nacho. It'd be a shame if you lost it. <laughs> now, how about some coffee, huh? Si. Si.
Santa Maria. For one minute I thought I was in heaven, and you were my guardian angel. Mister, you're half right. I'll pay off on the guardian. Davy, better get Luke. Quiet. Sure is. They won't move in. Not till it starts to get light anyway. That gives me a real good chance. For what? I want to break past them. I can get back from Timberline and some of the boys before they know what hit them. You saw what happened to Longbridge. Uh -huh. He's awake, Luke. You stay put. Get our guests some coffee. You're a lucky man. Only a scratch. I wasn't talking about that. Joe Brandy? Mr. Perry here ran him off. At least for now. Well, there's nothing the matter with you that food and rest won't cure. A clean life, Senor Perry. And a clear conscience. Conscience? If this were my command, he'd be cured. In a hurry, I assure you. Excuse me. It's hot. Gracias, amigo. My thanks, senor, but no man fights for me. Give me a gun. I will settle with Brandy myself. Don't tell me. Who are you? You know my name? You told me that. I also know you're a long way from home, but... Why is this fellow Brandy after you? That need not concern you. It's Hattlebird. Don Poole's trying to ride through him. Isn't there anything we can do? Yeah. We can wait. Necessary, senorita. The name is Sadie. And we never did get to finish that drink. Here. Salud. Now, hold still. Sorry. There's no other way to do it. Sadie, your touch is as soft as a rose petal. Mister, I've heard that a thousand times. How come you can make it sound so brand new? Perhaps because I mean it. Luke? You think Hattlebird got through all right? Well, I think we would have heard something if they'd seen him. Yeah, besides, he's too smart to let any old Indians... You hear it? The door. together that way, Zeke. What now? We can dig in and make a fight of it? Or we can meet Brandy's terms. Luke, I don't mind dying. But I'd sure like it to be for a reason that makes sense. 
I've been asking myself if one man is worth the lives of five men, two women, and a boy. The point's well taken, Major, but the right to decide that for each one of you isn't mine. What we need is some answers. Who are you? I am a highwayman. That is enough. Enough? Enough for all these people to risk their lives? You're no thief. But until you tell us what you are, you're worse than that. You're nothing. I don't think you're bad either, Mr. Lalanda. I think that's why Luke wouldn't shoot you down on the road. Please, tell us. Bueno. Bueno, I will tell you. I was a colonel in the Imperial Army of Emperor Maximilian. Maximilian? It surprises you, Major, that a Mexican would serve a Habsburg? There were many of us who wore his colors with pride. Wasn't Maximilian supported by the French? Betrayed is the word, senor. They left him and us to the mercy of Benito Juarez. People in Washington believe President Juarez to be the finest leader Mexico ever had. They may be right, Major. I don't know. But I do know what my country was like before Maximilian came. Poverty, hunger, a nation oppressed by a handful of landowners, leaders who could neither read nor write but were masters at stealing. Those of us who loved our country, we were helpless. Murder, corruption. It was a way of life we had to accept or face a firing squad. Then we were told about Maximilian. Oh, I was against him. We all were. Until we met him. This man was no despot. He too came to love Mexico. More perhaps than Benito Juarez because he died for his belief in his adopted country. He was a brave and a good man. When it was all over, I crossed the Rio Grande with a bounty of 50,000 pesos on my head. I had hoped to reach friends in California until Brandy picked up my trail. All right, it's up to you. See? I do hate bounty hunters. Longbridge? A long time ago, I ran away from a place called Fredericksburg. I guess I've been running ever since. You know, Mr. Perry, there's no satisfaction in it. Sadie? Got a coin? Miss St. Clair? My husband decides for both of us. You know, we've overlooked one thing. Even if we do give up Colonel Leilanda, we've no assurance these people will let us leave. Besides, I haven't been in a shooting fight since... Fredericksburg. Davy, you're in this too. I better go get your coat, Mr. Leilanda. Morning's get awful cold around here. Break out all the shells we got. Colonel, I think you know how to use this. These people, they would fight for me? Sadie, hot up that coffee. Mr. Hattleberg, he won't mind. Thank you, David. My thanks to the others, I'm grateful. For what? My pops is a man who runs away from a fight. This is all of his self-respect. Your pop, he's a very wise man. Naturally. Out there? There's nothing. 
nothing to keep me here. And I don't like the prospect of dying. You know what kind of men they are? They're men. And I like to be with the winner. You live longer. Senorita, you're a very poor liar. Now, just a minute. should know. The senorita was trying to get to Brandy to give us all a chance to get away safely. I wanted you to know this and to accept my gratitude before I leave. Leave? Senor Perry, you have decided it is a time to fight, but I think it is a time to run. Major St. Clair is right. It is foolish to risk seven lives for one. But you haven't a chance. A man who has a reason to live always has a chance. Good luck. She's right. No further, amigo. This time I mean it. Brandy will follow me. I will see to it he does not return. Take the Cessna, Mr. Lalanda. It's the fastest horse in the whole line. Thank you, David. I will. Open the door for me when I tell you. Adios. Mis buenos amigos. All right, David. behind the bar. All right, when he breaks clear, open up. What's the matter, Davy? Lou, do you think you'll make it? Who knows? I do. The sooner we get started, Mr. Perry, the sooner I get to California. Ought to cure your dog again. You sort of like him, don't you, Davy? Yes, ma'am. He's a real fine dog. You know, I always thought that dogs needed boys and the other way around. I have a long way to travel. How would you like to have him, David? For your very own. Do you mean that? I mean it. Oh, gee. I don't even know his name. What was your dog's name, David? Hannibal. That's funny. His name's Hannibal, too. Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. I think we can go now. My pleasure, Miss Wren. David! Thought you were going to wait for your dad on the next run. Well, I better not, Lou. No telling who you might pick up next. Keep your hair on, Zeke. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn. Hãy subscribe
hôm trước tôi đi chơi với trò chơi ba d tôi thấy tôi thấy không chịu được tôi bốn tọa độ cao rồi tôi lại đeo những cái kính đấy nữa à trời ơi hôm trước đi yêu đi chơi đây từ lâu rồi cơ xong rồi nó có cái cái trò mà mua mua vé ở ừ, đấy 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 xong rồi nó được ngồi xe ô tô với lại ấy tại ông chú thích chơi game mà nên nó cũng đòi được chơi cái đấy mà chơi cái trò dùng dao chém chém mà chị còn chơi ở trước em nó cho chị ngồi với xe ô tô chị phát khiếp linh hồn luôn chị sợ độ cao nên là chị đi cái thang máy mà trong cái lốt tê ấy chị cũng kinh thế là gì cho cái trò chơi cái trò đu quay với tàu lượn ấy là gọi là tim nhảy ra ngoài luôn đấy không dám mở mắt luôn rời tim rồi giờ cũng như là đi chỗ đi đường ấy xin chào mọi người à, hôm nay thì chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau tô một cái gói có khoai tây chiên với cái bạn tú đựng rất là xinh xắn như thế này nhé chiếc bánh bạn này nó ở cái mũ màu đỏ ấy mọi người nha <cười> em thích không nào nấu ăn thì nấu mai nấu cũng được nấu gì thế nhưng mà chị không biết nấu món gì cả con người không thích ăn cá không thích ăn uh, uh, động vật Ôi. à quên nhau không thích ăn da cầm nhau <cười> okay. à tôi cũng thử ăn chay tôi thấy đồ ăn chay cũng được nha chứ chị làm chị thích ăn cái nấm với lại đậu phụ sốt với lại xì dầu với lại dầu hào với bà phương không cho mình một món mà không biết ăn món gì à ta phải chờ menu menu chị nấu có một nghìn không cho mình một món mà ở gà ngoài gà rán là em không ăn cái món gà gì hết
xong hai chú mèo Hello Kitty đang làm bánh như thế này Nếu như cả nhà thích video của mình thì ấn like, share và subscribe kênh của mình để mình ra thêm nhiều video hơn nữa Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người